Advertising on YouTube helps me reach engaged customers like Jenna, who's been searching for landscapers on Google. Patiently waiting, seven day approaching our weekly motivation. Free from all our issues and the daily expectations. We've been waiting all week. Thank God for revelation. This foundation that we laced with. Ordinances is this thanks get. Never will I turn away. I'm on to fix these faces. Drew the Benjamin keep from same color, different faces. We've been scattered around the in all kind of different places. Traces, hurry, Jeff. Keep off in these pages. Searching through our history. Uncover the matrix. Destined to do better. Rule a nation in the making. Serve the king of all kings. You won't see us as a day in this arrest. They so be rested. Sabbath day, I'm stressing this. This is what that next is. Boy, don't test this. I'm trying to get these blessings. A theme for this message. Just wrapping off the checklist. It's time to get this message. Peace. Just got off, so I hit the dough. Uh, day of preparation, yeah, it's time to hit the stove. Woo! Got a couple of things that I'm looking for. Because I've been battling Satan, can't sleep on him, so I'm in the spot like what's cracking. It's a Sabbath time to feast on him. Uh, uh, so the real Jew say, see them songs, that's a Hebrew thing. Say Hebrew swing. Uh, see the bridges, that's that Hebrew blade. So I'm going to cut the ceiling fan on and drop my shoulder because it's a Hebrew team. Yeah. One time for the prophets. The ones that's putting it working, they ain't worried about a prophet. Yeah, this understanding, you ain't stopping. Your doctor's getting body gone. Put him in a coffin. It's been a long week working for the man. Can't wait to get home so I can see the fam. About to punch the clock and dip like a side of ranch. It's Friday, it's going down like an avalanche. Stop by the corner store so I can cash my check. Then stop by the cleaner so my pants is pressed. Cause tomorrow we got camp and I'ma give them stress. Cry loud on the streets with the precepts. It's Friday, no ice cube. Walk in the crib, put the deacons on the tube. Wife can serve me up with a plate of hot food. Before the sun went down, I was in the mood. To keep the Sabbath with the joy and gladness To be around my people and escape the madness Yeah, cause my whole week been a mess Now I'm in the spirit for the day of rest It's Friday Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Good morning. Good morning. How are you all? It feels so good to be back. Please uh, type in the chat if you can hear me. Um, just testing this out. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay, great. Somebody said yes. Thank you so much. So thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Yoella, the medicine woman. And I am so happy to be back. It's been a long time. I have been on a journey this past year and um, all praises to the most high uh, for that journey because I have a lot of new insight on just life period and just happy for life and just happy to be here and happy to be living in these times, even though it's crazy times. <clears throat> so just some little in-house cleaning. 
make sure you visit CocoFresh.com for all of your hair and skincare needs and overall wellness products. We have um, a seasonal product in stock right now called When Esther Met Coco Fresh. When Esther Met Coco Fresh, and it was something that I thought of last year, what would Esther want if she met me? <laughs> she would want something for her skin blemishes. She would want something for her vaginal care. She would want something for just overall health and wellness, something to relax her, something to make sure she's as glowing and radiant as she can be. So that's on sale now at CocoFresh.com. Along with some other health and wellness products, we are in the end times. There's pandemics going on. I have all of the best herbs. Um, I have elderberry, DIY elderberry um, herbs. I stopped selling the, the tonic because it became very uh, strenuous to mail out um, er, uh, the actual tonic. Um, because so many orders started coming in, uh, it just became crazy. So I felt like it was best to include um, complete directions on how to make your own tonic. And plus it's best to learn how to make your own tonics uh, in these last days. So that is also on sale. And uh, what else? Oh, uh, so it's the herbal uh, lung and cough uh, tonic that helps clear your lungs. The, co the, the COVID, I could say it on because I'm on Zoom, um, is attacking people's lungs and just all types of things that um, is popping up after you receive the COVID, okay? So just check out CocoFresh.com. Also on CocoFresh.com, there's a tab called the Medicine Woman Academy where I will be offering all of my courses. Uh, currently, we have the postpartum course, uh, postpartum, the ancient way, how to prevent depression and depletion. Okay, so make sure you sign up for that course, especially you doulas and mothers that have um, at some point experienced uh, depression or depletion, or just not being able to get yourself together after you have a baby is a step-by-step -step course on what to do to keep your nutrients up, to keep your body relaxed, how to manage your children, and everything that's going on around you um, right after you have the baby, which is really a hard, hard time. Um, it's hard, and we're so used to ignoring that period of time after we have a baby, because all of our mothers told us, girl, I just had a baby and went back in that field. You have a baby, go back in that field. No, we're breaking gener generational curses. We're gonna rest after we have a baby. We're gonna heal our body and we're gonna bond. So that uh, course is an excellent, excellent course on how to get yourself prepared before your baby comes in the world and after the baby comes and what to do. So if you are a doula and you want to go the postpartum route, this is an excellent course to couple with any other courses that you're taking. Or if you're just a mother and you want to prepare yourself on what to do after you have a baby. And it's even great for fathers to make sure they understand what's going on after it could be a grandmother that takes the course, any birth helper, any postpartum helper, any family supporter can take this course. Okay, so that's on CocoFresh.com and that is on the Medicine Woman Academy. Okay, so I like to jump right in. So today we're gonna to be talking about um, a couple of things, but it's all going to flow in to each other. We're gonna start out with talking about COVID. Um, recently, my husband showed me an article about how uh, COVID is affecting people that are suffering with obesity, okay? 
And I just thought it was appropriate because way before COVID hit, our prophets was talking about burn the fat, okay? So the Most High put that uh, spirit on them to talk about burning the fat because guess what? If you are obese, you have a higher chance of death during this pandemic. Now, this is not a blanket statement. You could be any size, you could be any age, you could be and really suffer from this pandemic, but you can also get through it. So burn the fat was a prophetic word that uh, the prophets brought out way before COVID started. And we really have to make sure we continue with that prophecy because the COVID is affecting us in a major way. So if you have not already started to try to get on a plan, on a regimen, on how to lose this excessive weight, you really need to start now, okay? So I have an article right here that kind of supports what I'm saying is from the sciences. COVID-19 reporting is uh, supported when the first wave of coronavirus hit the state of Vermont in the spring, patients from all corners of the state came to the intensive care unit in the University of uh, Vermont Medical Care. Their critical, their critical care physician, Mary Ellen, whoever, quickly saw a tragic pattern. Patients arrived at the hospital after a few days of flu-like symptoms and fever. They were tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, they grew increasingly short of breath. They ended up on ventilators and many of them passed away. In addition to this course of disease, patients frequently shared one addition attribute, obesity. These were otherwise healthy, hardworking people. Their major risk for getting this sick was obesity. So they emphasized this sick because we're all, we all can get sick, okay? Since the pandemic began, dozens of studies have reported that many of the sickest COVID-19 patients have uh, people with obesity. In recent weeks, the link has come into sharper focus as large new population studies have commented um, the association and demonstration that even people who are merely overweight are at higher risk. The example in the first, um, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my husband just walked back in, thank God, because this is a test run, y'all. I have a three-year-old now, I have a newborn, so um, I'm happy he's back just in case they wake up. <laughs> okay, so for an example, the first, um, of its kind published on 20 on the 26th of August in obesity reviews an international team of researchers pulled data from scores of peer reviews papers capturing uh, close to 400,000 patients with obesity who contracted SARS SOV2 were 13 113% more likely than people of a healthy weight to land in the hospital, 74% more likely to be admitted in the ICU and 48% more likely to unfortunately pass away. And 48% is extremely high, but this is amongst people that's obese, okay? <clears throat> so uh, people with obesity are more likely than normal weight people to have other diseases that are independent risk factors for severe COVID-19, including heart disease, which is very important, uh, lung disease and diabetes. They are also prone to metabolic syndrome in which blood sugar levels, fat levels, or both are unhealthy and blood pressure may be high. 
a recent study from Tulane University of 28, 287 hospitalized COVID-19 patients found the metabolic, metabolic syndrome itself sustainably increased the risk of ICU admission, ventilation, and death, okay? So when the prophet said, burn the fat before COVID hit, we need to burn the fat, okay? The impact intends to the 30%, 32% of people in the United States who were overweight. The largest description study yet of hospitalized uh, US COVID-19 patients posted as a preprint last month by whatever, re whatever um, word that is, researcher of controlled and prevention defines overweight as a BMI of 25 to 29 point kilograms per square meter and obesity as a BMI of 30 or greater. So when you are starting your journey of working out, it's very important that you understand what your BMI is. So if you have a personal trainer or if you go to a gym or any place or you even just get a device on Amazon or something, try to find out what your BMI is. And um, you have to work on getting that BMI down because you can appear big, but you actually don't have a large um, BMI, okay? You don't have a lot of fat cells. You could just have other things, muscles, you know, whatever. Or you can be smaller and have a lot of fat around your organs. So just because someone uh, appears to be small doesn't mean that they're unhealthy, okay? Uh, so you wanna make sure you find out what your BMI and ask if this is a healthy BMI or do I have to work on getting rid of the fat? So now I want to pivot and pretty much focus on the part where they say, including heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, okay? Heart disease, Black women are the highest at risk of heart disease. Black men and women are the highest at risk of diabetes, okay? A lot of people are at risk of lung disease because we was told all of our lives that it was okay to smoke weed, okay? And that has damaged a lot of our lungs. So now that there's a pandemic, some of our lungs cannot hold up. So um, on top of smoking weed, a lot of black people are cigarette smokers. And heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes all stem back to that ugly word, stress, okay? Now, our nation is highest at stress because we're the nation that's in captivity. So we are stressed out more than any other nation. And as uh, our elder mamas have talked to us about for years, we are the only ones that are doing everything by ourselves. We're too prideful to ask for help when we need help. We are too prideful to tell somebody that we're not feeling okay. We are too prideful to talk about our hygiene issues or if there's something going on with us, if there's anything going on in our marriage, okay? Um, we are hiding these things. We're getting stressed out. And then now we have all of these illnesses that pop up, acne, um, yeast infections, uh, heart disease, diabetes, um, anxiety. So let's take a look into what stress is doing to you. Now, remember, this is a short class. This is a test run because um, I'm trying to manage a new baby and also my demanding three-year-old. He has just became um, very demanding. So um, based on how this uh, test run 
class goes, then we'll continue to have more classes every week. So please bear with me. Thank you so much. So I've came across this uh, YouTube, you know, I like to, um, hopefully it just pops up. Oh Lord, okay, here we go. So we're gonna watch this video and I really want you all to understand what stress is actually doing to us because it's the stress that's making us obese. It's the stress that's causing the lung disease. It's the stress that's caught because now you want to smoke weed and smoke cigarettes and drink. And then it's the stress that's causing the diabetes. And we are the largest, the highest at risk in the whole country for all these things because we are in captivity. Okay. And a lot of us don't understand that. So instead of repenting and giving our lives back to the most high and learning how to deal with these stress, which is called temperance, we'll get into that later. We are turning to all these external things, even just constantly going to school, being in college, just not dealing with your own self. It's good to go to college. I'm not saying that you should not be in school to better yourself, but a lot of us are just doing things to ignore some of the things that's actually going on in our bodies. So let's take a look at this video and then I'll be back. for a test, trying to get more done than you have time to do. Stress is a feeling we all experience when we are challenged or overwhelmed. But more than just an emotion, stress is a hardwired physical response that travels throughout your entire body. In the short term, stress can be advantageous, but when activated too often or too long, your primitive fight or flight stress response not only changes your brain, but also damages many of the other organs and cells throughout your body. Your adrenal gland releases the stress hormones cortisol, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and norepinephrine. As these hormones travel through your bloodstream, they easily reach your blood vessels and heart. Adrenaline causes your heart to beat faster and raises your blood pressure, over time causing hypertension. Cortisol can also cause the endothelium, or inner lining of blood vessels, to not function normally. Scientists now know that this is an early step in triggering the process of atherosclerosis, or cholesterol plaque buildup in your arteries. Together, these changes increase your chances of a heart attack or stroke. When your brain senses stress, it activates your autonomic nervous system. Through this network of nerve connections, your big brain communicates stress to your enteric or intestinal nervous system. Besides causing butterflies in your stomach, this brain-gut connection can disturb the natural rhythmic contractions that move food through your gut leading to irritable bowel syndrome, and can increase your gut sensitivity to acid, making you more likely to feel heartburn. Via the gut's nervous system, stress can also change the composition and function of your gut bacteria, which may affect your digestive and overall health. Speaking of digestion, does chronic stress affect your waistline? Well, yes. Cortisol can increase your appetite, it tells your body to replenish your energy stores with energy-dense foods and carbs, causing you to crave comfort foods. High levels of cortisol can also cause you to put on those extra calories as a visceral or deep belly fat. This type of fat doesn't just make it harder to button your pants. It is an organ that actively releases hormones and immune system chemicals called cytokines that can increase your risk of developing chronic diseases such as heart disease and insulin resistance. 
Meanwhile, stress hormones affect immune cells in a variety of ways. Initially, they help prepare to fight invaders and heal after injury, but chronic stress can dampen the function of some immune cells, make you more susceptible to infections, and slow the rate you heal. Want to live a long life? You may have to curb your chronic stress. That's because it has even been associated with shortened telomeres, the shoelace tip ends of chromosomes that measure a cell's age. Telomeres cap chromosomes to allow DNA to get copied every time a cell divides without damaging the cell's genetic code. And they shorten with each cell division. When telomeres become too short, a cell can no longer divide and it dies. As if all that weren't enough, Chronic stress has even more ways it can sabotage your health, including acne, hair loss, sexual dysfunction, headaches, muscle tension, difficulty concentrating, fatigue, and irritability. So, what does all this mean for you? Your life will always be filled with stressful situations, but what matters to your brain and entire body is how you respond to that stress. If you can view those situations as challenges you can control and master, rather than as threats that are insurmountable, you will perform better in the short run and stay healthy in the long run. Okay. So I'm the type of person that likes to know why these things are happening and what is actually happening in the body when we are experiencing certain things. Okay. So that makes me help, that helps me process things better and really understand what I need to do to help fix this problem. Okay. I came across something that said one in three millennials have a diagnosed anxiety disorder. One in three millennials have a diagnosed uh, anxiety disorder. That really speaks volumes to me because I know when I was young, I didn't know what anxiety was, okay? And it jumped like that because of this age of social media, being influenced by social media, being influenced by peers that are not keeping the commandments and all these things that they are dealing with that we have not dealt with when they're younger, when we was younger. When we was younger, we had actual grandmothers that shoved cod liver oil down, it, down our throats when we needed to. Now all the grandmothers are 40 years old in, in the streets, okay? So our young, gen younger uh, generation do not have the same type of up upbringing and the same type of care that we had when we was younger. So of course, us being repented Israelite women, we can change that. You know, we are getting more into the herbs. We are getting more into um, exercising and keeping our bellies um, tight you know, that because that has a lot to do with stress as well. So uh, we have to really be mindful of the generation that's coming up behind us and teach them relaxation te techniques, take the tablets, take the phones, uh, limit the uses because now the schools are using a lot of the tablets and the phones. And, um, and honestly, my oldest son have a phone because now, like we're in Texas, they shoot up schools in Texas and do all of this stuff here. And, you know, so I need my child to have a phone so I could make sure I reach him um, anytime I need to. However, when he gets home, he knows to put his phone on my dresser. And what my 12 year old does, as soon as he gets home, he goes outside and he plays basketball or he dribbles or he shoots hoops. And I realized as a mom that's very in tune with my children, this is his way of de-stressing from school because there is a conspiracy against black boys in public school 
with these white teachers, okay? So I know he's going through stress at school, but it's my job and his father's job to teach him how to deal with the stress and how to relax. It's all about how you perceive the stress. You have to like let them know, okay, why don't you just chuckle at her inside? You know, stop letting her get to you. Just be quiet in school and just the the real life is outside of school, you know? But at some point he'll be taken out and being homeschooled anyway. Um, but like I said, my son goes outside and he spends about 30 minutes decompressing from what he has gone through from those eight hours a day. And I let him have that. Now, imagine if he walked in the house and I started yelling at him or, um, you know, making him go clean the dishes or you start your chores or start your homework or start and maybe something happened at school today. Maybe somebody wanted to fight him. Maybe he got in trouble with one of the teachers, you know? So after he goes outside and decompress for that 30 minutes, he comes inside and say, hey mom. And he starts a conversation with me and, he, and I say, how was your day at school? And he says, whatever went on today was actually a good day. And I'm like, okay, great. Or today was a horrible day. One time he fell in the mud. And guess what? Everybody took out their phones. I said, so you see how I say the phones are wicked? <laughs> you see, now he's starting to get, okay, these older people may not be so, you know, erratic when it comes to talking about the phone because he was so shocked that nobody helped him up. They took out their phones. Luckily, whatever they caught on camera didn't go viral, but he was pissed when he came home. But guess what? These are things that's going to happen in life. And it's all about how you perceive it. And it's all about how you process it. Um, you know, my, my husband has a good way of making a joke out of something or uh, making it light, you know? So he gave him little things to say, you know, um, or just kind of like send me the video, I'll pull it, put it up myself on my YouTube, you know, just to make him understand that these things are gonna happen and you don't need to react in an angry way or you don't need to act in a way where you wanna fight or get your blood pressure up at such a young age because you was running around and you fell in the mud, you know? So these are coping mechanisms that we have to teach our kids. And it goes back to the fruits of the spirit called temperance, okay? We're going to get into that a little bit later. So um, also when we come home or when our husbands come home from work, um, every man has a different way of decompressing from whatever they went through during the day at work or during the night at work. Some men like to watch movies. Some men like to talk on the phone with one of their brothers. Some men like to play an hour of a video game. Some men like to, whatever it is, you know, just hurry up and get in the shower and wash the day off of you. Some men actually like to have a conversation with their wife or just, you know, play with the baby. Whatever it is, um, you have to be aware at, okay, He's decompressing from the day. Let me leave him alone so he can get that out. And then, you know, I can let him know whatever's going on or what I need or whatever the issue is. Or if there's no issue at all, all praises, or if there is an issue, you know, just kind of be more insightful on times to, uh, you know, engage or come or and, and, um, speak to your husband with, with whatever issue that you may have gone through. So now for us women, ask yourself, how do I make me a priority when I need to serve everyone else? Okay. So us as women being the mothers and the caretakers and the keepers of the home, um, whether you 
have a bunch of children and got to take care of all the children, um, or you have a husband and you don't have any children, you still got to take care of yourself. You still got to take care of your husband and you still got to take care of a home. You still got to go to work. So, you know, I don't ever look at any sister or woman like they don't have their own stresses that they need to go through just because they may not have any children or this person only have one child and this person have 10 children this one oh you can handle it you only have one some of these kids got 10 different personalities in them that you all got that you got to manage and it's not easy so never look at another sister like oh, you only got one child, you, you know, I got 10. Don't do that. Everybody's capability is different from each other's. Okay. So we all got to be helpful towards each other. So ask yourself, how do I make me a priority? And uh, I want people to just put things in the chat while I'm stating mine you know, so other sisters can see what they do. Now, I look at healthcare, holistic healthcare as my one doctor, okay? So I do multiple things throughout the month, throughout the weeks, throughout the days for my self-care. So I make sure I go to the doctor, I have a medical doctor, and then I also always had a holistic doctor. I'm not in the same state with him anymore. However, I'm able to give him a call and say, hey, this is what's going on, even though he's getting old. <laughs> but um, all praises to the most high, I am taking on that holistic health um, journey myself. So, um, you know, I look at self-care and how I make myself a priority so that I can serve my husband and my family and my sisters and my brothers and my congregation and the most high all together, there's things that I got to do for me. And a lot of you all have not done that growing up and we are not teaching our children how to make themselves a priority um, at a young age so that they are not that one in three that's getting diagnosed with an anxiety disorder, okay? So you have to start teaching your children at a young age how to breathe. That is the first thing that you need to do. And I shared a, a, a post a couple of weeks ago about the importance of breathing through your nose, but that would be a whole nother class, okay? So for me, I need to go to the gym, even if I only do 30 minutes, okay? I need to take a nice long shower or bath every single day. I cannot do the two minute showers anymore, okay? I need to do what I need to do in that shower, whether it's just take a moment to myself, you know, so I make sure I do that when um, my children are sleeping, okay? Now remember to make sure you are posting in the chat. And if you are struggling in that area, all praises, we can start today, okay? Uh, I need to have the children in their room by 7 p.m. and sleeping by eight, okay? So that seven o'clock hour, I try not to, take any phone calls or anything like that because it throws me off. And then before you know it, it's 9.30 and my kids are still up, running up and down the house. And now I'm gonna get anxiety and I'm gonna get jittery and upset. And then I'm gonna start yelling, okay? Um, so I really try to get them, um, make sure they, as soon as they come home from school, they shower, put on their pajamas, then they can decompress. I let my little ones decompress, whether it's taking, um, playing a video game, or uh, they like to play with each other, play with the baby. They like to go outside. Um, so they have to decompress as well when they come home from school 
because I'm sure they have their own little stresses that they have that they go through. So if they just want to just go outside or something um, after I shower them, they can do that because Texas got that type of weather. <laughs> and um, if they want to play a video game or on their tablet for like an hour, I let them do that. I let them have a snack and then, okay, it's okay. Then once everything is okay and they're back inside, um, we do homework, um, we do dinner, and then we start um, brushing our teeth and stuff like that and get them ready for bed, okay? So I really need that done by seven o'clock. And I actually have an alarm on my phone to remind me, okay, it's about that time. I need to keep myself hydrated, okay? Um, early in the morning, as soon as I wake up, I have a cup like this, or I have my glass. It's this large. And first thing in the morning, your, your tummy acts as a toilet bowl, okay? So just think of a toilet bowl with the water sitting inside, and then the pipes coming down you know, and then you have your intestines and things coming down. So at night, it's so important to have a good night's sleep and to take your vitamins and things like that, because at night, your kidneys are breaking down stuff, your liver is breaking down stuff, and all your organs are doing things to repair the body. And so when I wake up in the morning, I guzzle down a full glass, a full cup of water or a full glass of water, uh, room temperature water, sometimes with lemon, sometimes without. And it acts as, when I guzzle it down, it acts as a toilet bowl effect. And it flushes whatever I broke down during the night out of my body. And then hopefully I can use the bathroom before my day gets started. And that is actually a de-stressor as well, because when you got to run around and go to stores and whatever, I don't want to have to stop and use the bathroom, okay, until I get back home. So um, that helps to flush whatever you was breaking down during the night, early in the morning. So make sure you stay hydrated. And then you could sip on, then I make my tea. And then, you know, um, I start my day with whatever I'm going to eat around 12 o'clock, one o'clock, whatever. Um, so um, that's what I do. I try to, and I make sure I drink water throughout the day. And last thing uh, before I cut off what I'm going to eat. I mean, before I cut off when I'm going to go to sleep. Um, so I need to keep myself hydrated. Um, I need a facial and a massage at least once a month. Okay. That is very, very relaxing and soothing to me. Also a manicure and a pedicure. Um, and if you can't afford these things, turn to your sisters, see if they have some sort of um, massaging skills, um, see if you could do a bartering system, see if whatever it is, if that's something that you think will have to, um, will help you de-stress, okay? I need to feed my spiritual man daily. So I need to listen to a class. I need to listen to, um, read the scriptures or even listen to the scriptures and have that quiet time at some point of the day. Um, a lot of times if my husband's going to get the kids from school, he takes the kids with him, the other kids that are not in school with them. And then I'll have a good hour and a half just to myself because I have a second shift coming up when all the kids are home. So I try to, you know, decompress from the first shift. Okay. So, um, I need to feed my spiritual man daily. Normally while I'm working, I have a um, class playing or, um, so normally when I'm working, I have a class playing or I play class first thing in the morning. Um, I need to eat vegetables with every meal. That's something that I started um, lately just to make sure I have something 
um, some sort of vegetable with my first meal and then some sort of vegetable with my second meal. And then if I'm feeling, um, I try to do maybe just one meal, but when you're working out and you have a bunch of kids, you need your nutrition, okay? So you need, don't, every diet plan is not for everyone. If you are a, a mother and you have a lot of things going on at home, you may not be able to start eating at one o'clock in the afternoon. You may need something in the morning. Make sure it does not spike your insulin, but we'll get into all that in another class, okay? On how to eat. Um, and then also I need to hug my spouse and my children daily. I need to make sure I have daily hugs from all of them because that is actually releasing oxytocin in my body, is releasing oxytocin in their body, and oxytocin give you that chocolate happy hormone effect, okay? But it just also feels good. So I may stop at some point during the day and get my hugs in from my husband if he's home or, and then also my children and my babies or whatever. And I even like hugging my sisters, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. So I'm gonna just take a second to see what some of you all wrote. Um, so somebody said they like regular massages and invest in a massage chair. Okay, I make myself a priority by having self-care day, bubble baths, face mask, and relax, relaxing music. Music also releases oxytoxin in your body, so find music. I can't listen to rap all the time. I have other types of music that I like to listen to. I like to listen to flutes. I like to listen to harps. I like to listen to classical music. Um, and then there's also some rap songs that I actually really like that's soothing to me, stuff like Andre 3000 <laughs> and people that's in uh, original royalty is very soothing to me, but also I like to listen to other types of music, okay? Um, and music by a candlelight, that is very important too because the whole vitamin D and the melanin, I have to do a whole nother class on that, but vitamin D, your melanin and candlelight have, or just being by a fire, a bonfire, being out in the sun, all have a lot to do with raising your uh, vitamin D and your melanin and things like that, which is for another class. So make sure you like that um, if you have a, a, what do you call it? a fireplace, make sure you're lighting your candles, make sure you're sitting out in the sun because it helps us melanated people. Somebody put, I'm still struggling in that area and all praises we can start today. Okay. There's a whole bunch of things that you can start with. I learned that a lot of my clients have anxiety. A lot of my clients I'll say, okay, your prescription is to take a F, two Epsom salt baths a week, you know, and watch a movie. You know, I'm called the medicine woman because the medicine are not just in the herbs, okay? The medicine is in other things, okay? The medicine is in laughter. The medicine is watching a good movie. The medicine is hanging out with your sister friends, having a nice long conversation with your Lord, um, laughing and giggling with your children. So, um, so sometimes that's the prescription. And I find that a lot of sisters will say, uh, I just can't just sit and take a bath every night. You know, they can't sit that long because something in their head is like, you got this to do, you got that to do. What about this? Did I forget this? Did I forget to take this pill? Did I forget to? And it's a constant battle in your mind on things that you need to do when 
that is also something that Esau tricked us into doing, okay? A lot of people cannot sit and watch a movie. When I have a big event the next day, I can't sleep at night, you know? But I'm not going to go drink a glass of wine. I'm not going to go pop a pill or take melatonin or anything like that. I'm going to lay there in my bed <laughs> all night <laughs> until it's time to get up in the morning. And guess what? I feel rested and I relax and feel relaxed. That adrenaline is going to keep me through that day or all of those things that I need needed to do for the rest of the day. And yes, I may feel a little bit tired, but I won't feel groggy and I won't feel slighted. And then I know the next night I will have a really good night's sleep, okay? And I might try to go to sleep um, an hour or two earlier, okay? But some people will not be able to just lay there for eight hours. Guess who can? I can. If I need to, you if if I can't go to sleep because I'm anticipating something for the next day, I'm not going to try to take something that will make me go to sleep. I'll try to drink some chamomile tea or have some aromatherapy. But sometimes that anticipation of what's going on the next day will prevent you from sleeping. So I'm going to rest my body and close my eyes and think happy thoughts. So somebody said, I'm struggling as well. All praises. Another person said, I'm struggling with this. So I'm going to make sure I have a class on really digging in deep on how to rest and relax. My girl said, I roller skate twice a week and I feel so much better when I get back home. That is decompression. That is having a downpour of sweat which is another way of uh, releasing that oxytocin that's in your body. Yes, um, skating is awesome. Somebody put, I'm struggling too. Uh, somebody put quiet time in the mornings. That quiet time in the morning is everything. If you got to wake up an extra hour early just to have that quiet time to yourself, that helps. Uh, someone put, I'm also struggling. Usually a walk helps. That walk, if you can't do anything else, walk, okay? I'm definitely struggling with self-care and relaxing, taking care of me. So I know what class I need to do at some point because I am all about self-care. Um, I found after a nice workout, I feel energized and less stressed, just having to be consistent. Consistency is the key. I enjoy showers after I work. I recently tried chiropractic service. Chiropractic, yes, I need to go to the chiropractor too. But when you find a chiropractor that you really love and they're in another state, it just kind of throws you off. Shout out to Sister Doc. If y'all are in Atlanta and y'all don't receive chiropractic service from that sister right there, y'all are missing out. I joined a gym. The plan is for my 13-year-old and I to go to, to go a couple of days out a week. I want to try tea in the evenings if I can take if I can train this dog, I would like to walk her long distances. Okay, all praises. I love to read and write, create something. Um, sewing and painting is relaxing to me. Painting is act actually relaxing. Winter season is a struggle. When I lived in New York, I did not realize how depressed I was. Some, some people don't get like that during the winter. Some people is fine during the winter. And then there's some people that the long winter months really bothers them and it did for me and I didn't, I didn't even realize it. Um, rearrange and organize my space. There's a lot of sisters who are organizers and rearrangers and that is actually soothing to them. Uh, the sun is very good for healing. 
weight loss, weight loss, joint pain, bone healing, etc. The sun is good for our melanin and skin. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, I also found that I like using my planner. Uh, memory isn't as good anymore, and I feel a little stress uh, knowing it's written. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, give me one second. Let's see, Jen. Okay. So what else do we have here? Um, all praises because even with melatonin, I don't go to sleep. Yeah, because you shouldn't be taking it. <sighs> um, yes, yeah, sticky notes and planners help. Um, driving is therapeutic for some people, especially uh, long hours of driving. Thank you. Uh, this class is awesome. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Um, love, love, love um, all these. Okay. Um, I also work to try things out, my Lord, to help the children so I can get some time and these girls in daycare to allow me to get myself together. Um, all praises with that. Taking care of children is a lot of work and um, a lot of times uh, we allow our children and their little balls of fire to um, burn us out and you can't. A lot of times our children just want our attention and we are so busy, we don't give it to them. When if you stop and give them the attention first thing, then they might actually leave you alone after they get, you give them your attention. Okay, so those are all really good things. Um, so ask yourself, how can you feel pe peaceful no matter what is going on? Um, stress for men, men actually handle stress better than women. Um, men have a flight, a fight or flight mechanism in them and um, they have better temperance than us. A lot of men, unless you're emotional, do not let uh, anything raise their temperature high or low when things are going on. Women tend to befriend stress. So there are some women, like for instance, as an example, if um, God forbid, or whatever, you know, your child have to go in, uh, somebody put breath work and stretching. That's a very good way to de-stress. So for all those people that don't know how to de-stress, um, start with your breath work and stretching. Um, okay, so for all of those, um, for uh, okay, so women have to learn how to befriend stress. So say you have a child and your child have to go in the NICU. There's I noticed that there's women that will be like, oh my God, my child has to go to NICU. Oh my gosh, you know, and get all up in the tizzy because their child have to go to the NICU. And then there's some women that's like, thank God there's a NICU that they can really focus on whatever's going on with my child. I'm gonna visit him every day after they discharge me out the hospital. I'm going to get my olive oil and I'm going to rub him down while we're there. And I'm going to help through the power of touch my child come out of this NICU. So it's all about how you process these stressful things. You never know how these things are going to hit you. Okay. But this is <clears throat> all into what temperance is. Okay. So if you are a woman and you have a fight or flight mechanism, you kind of have a more masculine way about you, okay? So you have to work on uh, being more feminine and befriending some of these stressors that we have in our life because that's how we are going to prevent our cortisone levels from going up. And the cortisone, um, those hormones, um, 
is what ages us much quicker, okay? That constant, that constant um, elevation, the heart rate, then comes the heart disease, then comes the wrinkles and the fine lines and all these things that um, us Black women are going through, okay? And then I also came across uh, an article that talks about wine does not actually help you relax, okay? So if you are turning to alcohol to help you relax, it will help you um, relax at that moment, but then now when it's time to go to sleep, you are not going in that fifth level of sleeping that you need to go in to really get a good night's sleep. Then you're waking up groggy, and then that also increases your cortisone level, and uh, you're not getting a good night's sleep. So sisters, be mindful of how much you are drinking. You are going to look haggard after a while, okay? Um, so men fight or flight, that's masculine. Women have to make friends with the stress, which is feminine, okay? So now looking at the fruits of the spirit, temperance is wellness, okay? The most high is a genius. He is the master scientist, okay? Wellness is temperance. If we apply the fruits of the spirit and the most high um, and the prophets are saying, stay in the spirit, we have to adopt these fruits of the spirit, okay? This is how we are going to be calm and we're gonna age gracefully like our elder mothers. They look so beautiful, okay? So um, being grounded during uh the great things that happens in our lives and being grounded during the disturbing things that happens in our lives. Yes, it's okay to cry. Yes, it's okay to get emotional and things like that. However, you have to learn how to not raise your heart rate so long. And if you can't control the situation, then you have to learn how to make friends with it. Okay. So this is where your counselor comes in. This is where prayer and fasting comes in. And this is where meditation comes in. I did not expect to go over an hour. So let me kind of speed it up because my husband is running around now. <laughs> okay. Um, someone said, someone said, hurt people, hurt people. And folks that don't have peace in their life wreak havoc on other people. So if you did not adopt peace in your life, you are going to make other people's lives less peaceful, okay? So you have to make sure you are finding that peaceful place in your life, okay? Webster Dictionary defines uh, temperance is the practice of always controlling your actions, thoughts, and feelings so you do not um, need to eat for stress and you do not need to drink too much um, when you become angry, okay? The Bible defines temperance as emotional restraint or self-control. That's what uh, the Bible's, um, what they're talking about in the Bible when they mention temperance. So Proverbs 16 and 32 says, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, okay? And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. He And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city, okay? So a lot of sisters that I come across do not know how to rule their spirit. They get into an argument, they run out the house, they yell, they scream, um, all these things instead of just kind of sitting there and understanding what is going on, okay? So um, herbs and supplements for mental health. B12, especially if you are climbing into your 30s and 40s, especially if you are a vegan, even when you're not a vegan, uh, eat a, a meat eater, 
even if you are a meat eater, you need to take your B12 supplements. B12 it is, is an important uh, B vitamin. It is crucial for nerve tissue, health, brain function, and production of the red blood cells, okay? And that article that I read earlier about the COVID-19, the obese people have sticky blood. Your blood has to be moving and circulating very fluidly, okay? Uh, vitamin D3. Vitamin D3, uh, healthy bones, healthy teeth, some, uh, supports lung function, improves heart health, um, and it supports the immune system, reduces risk of the flu, it improves brain function, and it regulates insulin levels and it supports a healthy nervous system. There's, I don't really like to throw out uh, herbs, um, but just be mindful. Make sure you uh, do your own research about herbs. But there's also a herb called ashwagandha. And ashwagandha is known to help your stress levels within one hour. So it improves skin health. It improves brain function and memory and a whole bunch of other things. So I want to thank you all for joining. This is my time. Ladies, please hashtag on social media. Um, morning talk with Coco Fresh. Please join in next Friday. Please visit my website. I really appreciate you all for joining in and thank you so much. Um, I hear my baby crying. So it's time for me to go. Um, all praises to the most high and uh, thank God it's Friday. Your mind should be in prepare mode and then tomorrow should be active listening mode. Thank you.